Hey, what's up? This is DJ Soul Man in beautiful Las Vegas, and you're listening to Wheeler's Weekend Jams, live and direct. Wheeler's Weekend Jams, live and direct. Wheeler's Weekend Jams, live and direct. I'm here in Las Vegas for uh, 311's 25th anniversary as a band and also playing the Blue Album tonight. And right next to me is Mr. DJ Soul Man. How you doing, doing, sir? How you doing, Mr. Wheeler? Fantastic, man. I really Welcome appreciate it. on the weekend jams, man. Yeah, man. Hell yeah. I'm an avid listener, so I know. <laughs> yeah. So how's Vegas been treating you so far? Uh, Vegas is like, um, you know, like a... It's kind of like, uh, kind of probably like a dirty old girlfriend, you know what I mean? <laughs> Kind of, you're kind of glad to see her, but you're kind of like, oh man, Vegas. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know you're gonna go hard the whole weekend, and, and you, you lose go, a lot of money. Yeah, you lose a lot of money, and uh, but you know what? You make friends, and uh, hopefully you make memories. Exactly. And, and that's uh, that's what Vegas is built on. You know what I mean? Listen, 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 listen. Now I'm gonna take you way back here. You were in the, the Funk Junkies, oh, classic yes. Funk Junkies. Appreciate it, thank you. So, uh, yeah, man, it's, uh, it's like I said, this is an honor. And when you guys stopped as a band, how how was the change? Was this DJ thing always, were you always doing this before the Funk Junkies, or yeah. did this come after? Yeah, in high school, uh, I used to DJ, and I actually met the original partner who I started Funk Junkies with. And we did the white rap group kind of thing, you know, and did that for a while. And we used to get shoes thrown at us at hip hop concerts and shit. <laughs> so uh, we kind of, that evolved and uh, kind of moved into the alternative scene. And that's kind of when we met 311, actually. Uh, we just started being a band. So we took kind of our rap scenario and moved it into the band thing. And I was always the DJ. I mm-hmm. always made the beats and grabbed the samples. So in the early Funk Junkies records, all the samples, I did all the scratch and made all the beats. All the way up until the last Funk Junkies record, I pretty much did a lot of the beats and mm-hmm. worked with uh, the other guys in the band and we all produced stuff together. And uh, so, you know, it's, it's always uh, been kind of a, the DJ thing has always been my backbone. Yeah. That's been exactly. kind of like my thing, you know? So after the band, after we stopped doing the band, I just went back into DJing and it was just kind of a natural progression. And at the same time, DJing was starting to blow up too. So exactly. it was kind of, you know, just good timing for me to do that, you know what I mean? Right on, man. That's your it's a lot soul, easier man. to roll solo, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I enjoyed being in the band. We had some great years. We we definitely uh, conquered some big mountains. Yeah. But uh, I like being a DJ because every song is a hit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You've been in a band for a long time without a hit. I know. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, yeah. speaking of beats and everything, uh, you know, EDM, uh, you know, that is the new thing. And as a DJ, are you? What do you think of the new scene of you know dubstep and EDM? That's you know. Yeah, I like. Um, I personally like music, no matter what. And mm-hmm. I like. Um, I like whether it's hip hop, rock, old school, new school, EDM, trance, trap, techno, whatever. I'm into it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. As long as it's got a groove and it's got a good beat. That's why I play with so many different crowds. But I think um, you know, there's there's the art of DJing, uh, which is kind of like what I consider a DJ is somebody who comes to the party and plays music to get the people rocking. And then there's this new kind of artistry which slides into being a uh, quote unquote DJ. Yes. And that's more artistry, I think. So I think what we would consider EDM now would be back in the day like a Depeche Mode or a New Order, you know what I mean? Kind of a electronic dance. Mm-hmm. You know, that's, that's it's kind of, you know, obviously that's what it is, electronic dance, EDM, but yes. that's what I think of it. I think um, it's just a time where it's it's really digital, but I think rock and roll is coming back. You know, oh, musicianship it's... always comes back when it gets to push and play. Yeah, exactly. When when the music gets so dumbed down, so then it's just push play, mm-hmm. five dollar foot long all night long. <laughs> show them some love, show them some love, and repeat. Exactly. Then usually the musicianship comes back in. People get bored. There you so, go. There you go. You know? So how uh, how has your relationship been with 311 all these years? I mean, obviously you're playing on the cruises with yeah. them. You're doing the show, you know, tonight. 311, um, we're great friends. I yeah. mean, uh, along with not only am I a fan of the band, you know, we have a mutual respect because we played so many shows together uh, with Funk Junkies and with me just doing the DJ thing with them, with Trichrome and a couple of the other guys, uh, Kilmore and just you know some of the DJs that kind of run around with the 311 Familia. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's just, it's. Uh, it's it's kind of hard to explain, but it's a very unique brotherhood, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? And uh, these guys have uh, always reached out and uh, made made opportunities happen for me in the music world. And uh, and I, I don't take that lightly. I take that, you know, as they, they expect me to give my all and my best. And that's why sometimes, 
you know, sometimes when I'm DJing, it's magic. Sometimes it's tragic, man, because I give it my all. You know, I don't know what I'm going to play. I don't know where I'm going. Exactly. And uh, I was telling you earlier off the camera, we were talking about, you know, just sometimes, like, you know, last night I played a set, but I know how 311 fans are, whereas maybe if I was touring with somebody else, I could play that same set tonight and just be like, just nail it. Mm -hmm. But tonight, I'm like, oh, shit. I'm going to out new records. There's going to be some guy in the third row calling me out, going to Facebook me and be like, bro, right. play the same song twice. You exactly, know? yes. So, like, that's the challenge of 311. They take musicianship to another level, man. <laughs> and they make you do the same. Yeah, yeah. They don't take no bullshit, man. Exactly. <laughs> So what? So what's next for DJ Soul Man? Are you you're gonna stick to DJs? Is there ever gonna be like a future album that you're gonna come out that you wanna do for yourself? Yeah, yeah you know, um, you know, I'm so caught up in in playing other people's music that I don't, you know, I don't. My interpretation is that. You know what I mean? My originality is being unoriginal right now. Mm -hmm. If that makes sense. Yeah. My originality is playing the songs that people know, just doing something big with them. Play big tunes and do something bigger with them. Mm -hmm. So right now, what I'd like to do is just keep making remixes, keep working on my stuff as a DJ. You know, I've shared the stage with so many bands and played with some of the biggest shows with Funk Junkies that it's like, you know, I mean... You know, I've shook hands with Carlos Santana. I've played with Joey Ramone. I've, you know, uh, no doubt open for me. Incubus, took, we took them on their first tour. Yeah, you know, Rage yeah. Against the Machine open and for they, us. And Incubus ate your potato chips. And the Incubus eating my potato chips story is great. <laughs> Bottom line, they went and got us a new bag of chips. Or they weren't playing. Really? But yeah, well, we got to Worcester, Mass, not Worcester. <laughs> Don't say that wrong. When you get to Worcester, Mass, I go in the dressing room in Incubus, had ate our potato chips. And I took Brandon and I saw, I said, Brandon, listen, what's up with the chips? He's like, what do you mean? I'm like, bro, those are our potato chips. He goes, yeah. I go, well, you're not playing if you don't get us a new bag of chips. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what we get. We, this is Worcester Mass. We yeah. chips, beer, and a party tonight. Mm -hmm. That's what we get. So long and the short, me and him aren't friends, I don't think anymore. But Brandon, yeah. if you watch we Wheeler's Weekend Jams, not only should you do an interview because it's good for you, but two, dude, it's only potato chips. It's not a big <laughs> deal, bro. You didn't have your name on it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. What the hell, Brandon? God yeah. damn. Steal potato he'll chips. Be all entitled. And Cutting off his tips. dreads, and now he's it. Yeah. Bring the didgeridoo. Bring the didgeridoo, <laughs> didgeridoo. back, bro. It's all about the didgeridoo, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, for uh, Funk Junkie fans, will there ever be a, like a reunion show, you think? We did a reunion show <clears throat> three years ago. A friend of mine's daughter had open heart surgery, and we got together with Jimmy Eat World, and we played a show oh, uh, really? in okay. Phoenix, and we did that, and um, that was awesome, man. That mm. was a good time to get back together, but the rest of the guys, I don't know, man. You know, we were in a real rock band. We weren't in no, like, sissy bullshit. You yeah, know I mean? yeah. So, so it's really tough to just get six guys back together and go and put together the folk jokes, you know? Yeah. In a time, it was a place, it was an era, and it's hard for me to, like, be able to get guys together to even make that happen. Exactly. Because it was so fucking real. Yeah, If yeah. that makes sense. It was so raw that it's, like, any other formation of that would be me and some guys up there playing, and mm -hmm. I, I would I, I don't feel that I would want to do the funk junkies that way. You got to be serious. Yeah, I mean, you know, and I really want to, to be like an energy thing. And, exactly. You know, that's not there right now. Not saying Correct. I would never do a band again. Yeah. Because I, I do play with a lot of musicians and have been playing with a lot of musicians, mm -hmm. accompanying my DJ shit. So yeah. maybe that's what's on the move on the rise for DJ Soul Man is that kind of thing. Exactly. Cool. You know, right on, man. Guitar solos over my DJ and then fuck you. Yeah. Drums, drums, dude. Yeah, keys. And I'm a drummer, bro. So just so, put that right, out well, there. Let's do this. Yeah, let's do it. Right, 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 time, man. man. I'm in. <laughs> okay. Well, hey, man. If, if there's anything you want to say to the fans, any, any, where, where to find you? Website. You know, um, I'm gonna start streaming a lot of my shows. So on mycity.com, as well as some other platforms, uh, Periscope and stuff like that. So uh, doing that and just you know, just check out my mixes on SoundCloud and most of all, just listen to good music, man. Yeah. You don't have to be DJ Soul Man 311 anything. Just Listen to good music, you know yeah. what I mean? And oh, yeah. Just turn off your radio and listen to good music. Damn straight. Be open-minded. Yeah, definitely. That's what your weekend jams are all about, man. Damn straight. That's man. why I respect what you do so much. Hell yeah, man. Thanks I appreciate it. Hey, man. DJ Soulman, everybody. Thank you so much, yeah, man. Yeah, I appreciate definitely. it, man. Out of here from Las Out. Vegas. Yeah. And we didn't get busted. <laughs>